guys, Ileana here. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how I make my Mexican rice. Uh, for the sake of the video, I usually don't measure, but I went ahead and I measured the rice, and it's about two cups. There's my rinse cilantro, a few slices of onion. There's my consomate, one can of tomato sauce, homemade beef stock. I show in a recipe how I made this one. And I'm going to put... I'm going to let, and this is an eight inch Royal Prestige pan. I'm not getting any benefit out of mentioning that, but I do absolutely love these and they have saved my house from burning up at least twice. I was baking beans and completely forgot it. Came back, my house was all smoked up, pan intact, sealed completely. Uh, the lid was completely sealed. So the first step, guys, is going to be to heat up some oil. I use olive oil. It's just better, healthier. So heat up your pan with some olive oil. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention, I do not rinse my rice. I will show a picture of the bag of the rice that I use. It is jasmine rice, and I buy it at Sam's. And it comes really, really clean. So I do not rinse it. Um, everybody tells me that they love my rice and that it comes out so nice and, and separate. I'm pretty sure this is part of the reason. But, you know, just so you guys know. So you're going to heat up your pan about maybe a minute or two. Make sure that the oil is nice and hot. So once your pan, your oil is pretty heated, you're going to see it spreading that way. You're going to add your rice. And I immediately add my onions to fry with the rice. I leave the pieces big because my family doesn't like the onions in there. But I absolutely love the flavor that they give it. So I add it and I just make it to where they can remove it. So you're going to brown your rice. And it doesn't take too long, but you want to brown it really, really good. So I let it sit for a little bit after I mixed it very well and you go in again and you mix it again. You want to get a really nice even brown tone. Right now the rice is just getting a little bit white and there's a few pieces that are getting toasted. So you want to just keep keep on here, stay near the kit, near the stove. I always tell my daughter that food always tastes good if you don't leave the kitchen. Growing up, I would um, put up a chair next to my grandmother's stove and I would just cook next to her. And I don't know if she told me at one point or I just figured, you know, she never left the kitchen till she, till she was completely done with the food. So I kind of picked up on it. As you can see, there's a few little kernels that are starting to toast. We want them to mostly look that way. It's been about three minutes. You, I let it sit. I mix again. Let it sit and mix again until you have a really nice even color of rice. In the meantime, you just keep mixing until you get the distribution of color that you want. Alright guys, so after about five minutes, your rice is going to start looking like this. I already have my chicken stock ready. Um, my mom does two parts of uh, liquid to one part of rice. I usually don't measure. But it is one quart of the beef stock. Now you're going to be careful when you add the liquids because it is going to sizzle quite a bit and the vapor gets pretty hot. So I usually add my one quart of chicken stock and then I will add more water. So there it is just with the beef stock. It's either chicken stock or beef stock that I add. It depends what I have available. Um, today I went ahead and I went with the beef stock, even though I have both. 
And you throw in all your tomato sauce and then you refill this little can with water and finish filling it up. There it is, the rest of the water. Usually this is how much I fill my pan. These pans cook really well so they lose very little moisture. And so that's another one of the reasons why I love them. You mix everything in really good. And I usually wait until my rice comes to a boil. Just when it starts coming into a boil, I will go ahead and put the lid on. Season it. And add my cilantro. Didn't take but a minute, guys. You don't have to wait until it boils completely. You just want, you see that right there? You see that water turning around in there? As long as you see that, it is good. The reason I wait for that is because I want my consomate to dissolve really well. So I, I make sure that the liquid I have put in there is pretty warm so I don't end up with any clumps in the in the soup so if you don't mix this powder in very well it will create clumps and then you'll end up with one spot that is really salty so to prevent that you go ahead and you add your seasoning your bouillon your consomate until the the stock or the water that you have in your pan comes to almost a boil till it's nice and warm. I added my seasoning so now I'm going to taste it. You have to taste your food guys. You have to make sure that it is to your liking. Okay. If you're content with it, so after you've added your seasoning, you wait and make sure that it starts boiling before you cover it up. Another thing to remember, guys, when you're using chicken stock or beef stock, you have to make sure that you undersalt a little bit because in my case, at least, my stocks are already salted because they have already been previously seasoned. Uh, so you want to make sure to be careful to undersalt when you're making your rice, when you're using your stock. And kind of um, take into account the amount of salt that's in your stock already. You can always add extra water to compensate a little bit, but you know, just try to keep that in mind. And so, once it is coming up to a nice boil, you mix it one last time. Make sure the tomato sauce, everything is mixed in well. You cover it up. There you go, guys. Once it starts doing this, you close this. Quickly lower your flame before you have an, too much of an overspill. Leave it to where it is barely, 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 barely on. For those of you that don't have any lids with the valve, you simply lift the lid and leave it a little bit cracked open like this, just very, very, very slightly to allow for the least amount of moisture to escape. But I highly recommend that you cook your rice in a pressure cooker is what these lids create. So once you have closed your valve and lowered your flame, this is more or less the way it's going to look. At this point, guys, you don't want to disturb it. Um, if you close the lid just as soon as you hear that whistle, uh, you won't have any spillage. I had a little bit of spillage. It took me a little while to get to it since I was trying to hold my phone at the same time, and it's very hard to do. Uh, but if you do it right when it starts to whistle, close the valve, lower the flame, 30 minutes later, you're going to have your perfect rice. Well, here it is, guys. A little bit before the 30 minutes, you start smelling the rice. It's nice and ready. 
perfectly separated Mexican rice. Delicious. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys want me to show you any other recipes, please uh, let me know. Make sure to subscribe, turn on your notifications, and thanks again. See you guys soon. Bye. So guys, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I had some leftover chicken breast, which I have already shredded. I'm going to move to the side. I've had this can of mole that I need to use, and I'm going to add a little bit more chicken. So for starters, I'm going to cook this chicken breast, fry it really good, and then I'll tell you what's next. Quick, easy way to make some mole to accompany my rice. While I was cutting my chicken breast, I went ahead and I put my pan to heat up, added some olive oil, and I'm going to fry that chicken breast that I had, cut it up in small little pieces. Once my chicken is browned a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit of garlic salt. Just to give it a little bit of flavor. So while my meat is cooking, my chicken, I went ahead and I chopped my leftover chicken breast into smaller pieces. I'm going to go ahead and mix the meats together so I can heat up this other meat. So my chicken is now cooked and I've turned it off and I've had a little bit of water boiling on a different saucepan. You're going to pour in your mole Doña Maria and you're going to make sure that you, you make the paste. I need to spoon this out because it gets compacted some. So let me spoon this out and so I can show you guys what the next step is. So after you empty out all the contents in your pan, I always started with a little bit of water. It's just easier to get the, the paste going uh, to dissolve if it already started with some warm water. Uh, you add four of these cups of either chicken stock or, or water. Uh, this time I'm using only water. I didn't bring down any chicken stock, but you do that. And it's so crazy because I see the cup and I remember... How many of you grew up with drinking out of cups like this? As I got older, I realized, oh, those are the Doña Maria cups. <laughs> anyway, so once your um, paste has all dissolved, this one's almost done. It'll take it a little while to make sure that there are no clumps in your sauce. That paste is pretty thick. I wanted to go ahead and mention that my grandmother used to add chile colorado sauce, which I have shown you guys how to make that on my uh, pozole um, post, okay, with the chile colorado. So you can make the sauce just like that. And she would add chile colorado to the blender, maybe a, maybe a cup or two, depending on, of course, how much mole she was making of the chile colorado. And she would add some bread, some pan blanco, or just some regular white loaf bread. And she would blend all that and then mix it in here with the mole. Today we're only going to do a fast and easy mole from the can, if you will, um, which also comes out really good. So I opted for this method for when I really absolutely need to make a, a quick meal or just feel like making a fast meal and still making it healthy and delicious. So my sauce is ready. So now I'm just adding all the chicken. And we're going to mix it in and let it come to a boil together. There you go guys, mole is all done. I went ahead and I let everything boil for about 15 minutes at a low heat. Thank you for watching. See you guys later. Bye.